Okay, I've been playing my motor here a little bit, trying to figure out what to do here. So the the rock arms are all up in there, like I said. I went ahead and put all the parts together over here, and I got one more full set of rocker arms, complete with nuts and everything. So I got it for another motor. So, so I'm going to put these on, so you can run hex hardware on these. Most aircraft stuff they use 12 point hardware, so be like kind of like an Allen, but not quite. But hex head would work. So these ones here would go on here, obviously. So that's kind of what your motor would look like right there. So the intake one isn't too far off. The exhaust is, uh, the angle's good going this way. It's just, it has to lean. We need to lean it in a lot further. So that's going to be the only problem. So I have to grind a bunch of that fins off right there. It looks like the spark plug will clear just fine. So we're good to go with that plug or any other plug actually. Obviously a lot of room coming into the top here for a spark plug, so they made it. And then uh, obviously a single cam motor is working pretty good on that part. The problem we have is, is the lifter block. So this one here, I could probably put a little bossing right in here and get a couple small bolts in here. And maybe a couple 5 16 bolts in there. Not sure. The case, the bolts are way over here. On the airplane motor, the bolts way over there. When the two bolts come together in the V, these two would probably hit each other if I left them there. If I slid them out a little bit to where the stock bolt is, then it would probably just clear. The problem is if you use the stock bolt location, it's so close to the cylinder, nut probably wouldn't clear. You'd have to recut all this away. So you'd still have to plug that hole and move it out a little bit. So probably something in between those two is where you wind up having a bolt. Slot this hole out a little bit and make it work. So I'd have to mock it up and see how close the two bolts would be if I V'd it and use a stock location. So that's unknown. Looks like I could probably make this work over here. But it's going to be tight. I will obviously have to modify the lifter block to fit in there easier. Which means I'd probably have to cut the case out to get more clearance or something, I'm not sure. I had to grind a lot of it away in here to get clearance because it was hitting on the other block. So One of these two blocks, not this one or that one, I forget. This doesn't look like I cut on it, so I think I cut the case. I think I was cutting a lot in here, but it doesn't look like it was. But I know I was cutting in there with a die grinder on something. I don't know what the hell I was cutting on. I don't see where I was cutting, but I was cutting a piece out of it, so. Right here, there's a chamfer right in here. That's where I was cutting. Okay, either way. Um, obviously, with this cylinder in the same plane as the, you know, inline this way, you have no room for your lifter block, because the lifter blocks are, lift, are offset because of the rock, because of the lifters. To put all the lifters in one spot, you always have to move two over. So ideally what they do is you take the cylinder and move it over. And that would put your bolts like it would be over here. You can probably make it work. And then you run two male connecting rods instead of a female and a male. So instead of using a knife and fork arrangement like this is, you wind up just using two male rods side by side. Now the two side, the two male rods are a little bit narrower than the overall width of everything, so you'd have to put a little spacers in there, to take up the slack. That also gives you the luxury of moving the cylinder over even further and still be centered on the rod. So that all would help you. And then instead of being this being centered right here on center, you move this thing over to about here and weld all this, weld all this up on this side. Like a Delcron case is real thick over here on that side. So you weld up this area right through here, put two big bosses in here. And you might, you probably have to put a little boss right here and then two big ones here where they stick out probably this far. And you can put all those bolts on there. But all the rest of this case would be the left alone. You need to put two bosses up here for this one also because of the way, the way it overhangs. That push rod fill out. This is Sportster uh, 
push rod cover, which does not work on the big twin, but I'm just doing it for mock-up length. You can see how Sportster is a little bit longer. Now you can also obviously take these and cut them and lengthen them, or you can take these tubes and lengthen those, depending on how you want to do it. It doesn't really matter which way you do it, they both will do the same basic thing. So, so right now, if I move this over, so I don't lose that. Lose my motor, like I'm trying to lose. So I'm going to see better. Okay. So on this side of the motor, which we haven't done yet, I'm going to do this with two hands. It's hard to move stuff when you only got one hand. Okay, now we're on this side of the motor. Okay, so over here. This is what the left side of the bike would look like. You got dual carbs here, one here, one here. So that's what that would be. Now you can very easily put a fuel injector right through here. Squirt it right on the valve guide, come in at an angle, squirt right in there. And that would give you a fuel injection motor, real easy. Just got to whittle the boss there and do it. If you don't want to do that, you want to use a carburetor motor. Then obviously you can hang two carburetors on here. Now normally a Harley carburetor manifold is about right here. So this is a little bit better. No, it's about the same spot there. Way, their extra ports are way over here. So it's close to where we're going is. So if you put the carburetor out here, it would hang out pretty far. You might gonna weigh your shifter a little bit because you normally, when you're riding your Harley, you get your right leg bowed out to clear the carburetor, the air cleaner. But anyway, if you put a carburetor and bolted it right on here, Real stubby, you know, as short as you can, you know, like a 48 McKinney or a 45 millimeter McKinney. <clears throat> this is a pretty big port, so in metric that would be what? Forty-five point four millimeter. So forty-five millimeter carb, be plenty. So you could do a 45 millimeter bikini right on here and then run an air cleaner on it. And you have two of them on the bike, one forward, one back. You can make up some kind of a manifold that would come that, you know, come 90 degree out of here and go forward or backwards or however you want to do it. <clears throat> but you still, what are you going to do with the carburetor? Probably the best thing to do would be some kind of a snake, or I mean, a, a, like a full, um, a full donut, like on an egg. On exhaust, the exhaust come in those big donuts. You can do a full donut exhaust, which is coming right out of here, port, come straight in here, and you have the carburetor right here. And you can put a carburetor, pretty big, uh, pretty big one way in here, so it barely even stick out this side over there. Yeah, because there's a lot of room in between here. And you can just do it that way, just be a full wrap system, which would look pretty, pretty different. Wouldn't take up hardly any space at all. This one would be kind of tight. This one obviously had to go all the way over here a bit longer. Not a major issue. So that's kind of how the airplane ones are. They got these big Y manifolds with hose clamp, pull them all together. And it comes with a big common plenum with big, looks like spider legs coming out, kind of weird. So that probably be your best way of doing it if you don't want to do an injector. If you want to do an injector, then you, you do the same thing, but just put a throttle body in here. I like that kind of do you not like that. If you want to do more racy, you can have a log manifold going forward and then have a big injector sticking forward with a big tapered snout. And it would stick out like my race bike there, where it sticks way out in the front, but it'd be, you know, way out here in front of the bike, kind of. So, you can do that. If you want to turbocharge it, that makes it really easy to turbo it. So, there's, there's a lot of options, so, depending on what you want. It's, but the biggest thing, it's got a pretty good size port on it already, so. And it goes right into the valve, which is nice for flow, so it should make good horsepower. A lot better than your normal Harley motor, which is kind of crappy. Which has a real crappy low port. Real short, short side. And it says Y manifold when this one screws up this one for flow. It doesn't work with a squat. So as soon as you go into a common single deal, you can pick up a lot of power real quick. You can also go into a big plenum and still have the carb going out that side over there. And ideally you want the plenum to be at least the size of what one cylinder is. And that's one thing Harley never has. So if you did that, that would help a lot on making the motor free or breathing. 
and you can still have the carb sticking out, you know, going out this other side because you have all this area right here. It's full of stuff, but I would just do the long manifold deal and call it, call it done with that. You would try to make these as equal as you can in length. So you'd probably do a instead of, instead of being a even Y this way, you'd probably stagger it. So this one go low and this one would go high. And you have it going that way with two. And then have a common port there. Might get it more equal. Be a little different looking. A lot of options. And you can what's nice about single single cylinder motors. You can they're each whatever you do on one, you can do on the other, and it's pretty equal. So they both run good. Whereas in a Harley, you got one cylinder runs pretty good, and the other one sucks because the manifold's all wrong. The the way it flows through the intake port screws everything all up. You can separate the exhaust system, you can separate the ignition system, but you can't separate the carburetor on the Harley unless you got a single like that. So on this one, you got to separate two totally independent single cylinder motors. There you go. So it works a lot better. So anyway, this one over here, I, I like the idea of doing the double mail rod and offset the cylinder over. I really do like that. And that'll also keep you from having to cut the cylinder so much away because they're not going to be on top of each other fully. The pistons won't quite hit each other as hard. They're still going to hit hard. But if you keep the, uh, the cylinders on the same V angle or right together like they are, they're going to hit. They're going to hit hard. That's why the Harley cylinders are all cut away. Like that. Because it comes and hits this other one like this. So you got to make room. This one has the same problem. The bigger the bore is, the more of a problem you have. That's why you have to go up higher. But you can only go so high. So this one here, with the frame being uh, pretty far away, we can probably increase the V angle by 5 or degrees or so maybe eight and the ignitions have enough adjustability in them that you can on the computer you can do that you can compensate for that v angle change and that would widen it out in the frame a little bit so if that's you know you, i need to put it up in the frame and really check for clearancing but if you can clearance the you know if it, if it slides over and clears the frame great one advantage of this that is the intake manifold can be made a little bit longer here, which is going to help our pouring. And we have a lot of room for a big carbon right in the center here. And like I said, the air clean would be almost flush on this side. So I'd get away from your leg being all would be a problem. So there are a lot of advantages to doing that. So anyway, so that's just kind of different things I'm shooting around. That's why I don't want to cut the cylinder right now. I'd rather not cut it. If I move the cylinder forward a little bit and back a little bit and offset a little bit, ideally I want to make the cylinder have to cut anything. That's my goal. So, but I want to keep the deck as low as I can because the motor's getting pretty tall. I still want to be able to put this thing into a frame. So, I might have to use a custom frame, but at least you know regular aftermarket stock style frame. They always got more clearance than Harley frames. So, but anyway, the backbones are pretty, pretty much the same location on these things. You can also rotate the motor slightly forward, which would help you on the back cylinder, and usually you got a lot of room in the front. Except on road turds, they're pretty tight on the front. So, so until I get an actual Harley frame down here to check it, I'll have to find out. I don't have any Evo frames floating around. All my stuff's old. All I got's the aftermarket frame, which is not really going to help me as much in figuring this out. So, like I said, I like the idea of running all eight bolts and. Just putting the bosses here and then moving this whole thing over would be ideally would be the way to go. So basically the cylinder would be about right where this is. You'd probably be coming up further than that. Probably go cut through the whole case. You you have definitely have to put some material out here. You'd have to come out at least with the height of this is. That's just a matter of welding, it's not a major issue. The cylinders only go down about this far. You don't have to go much. You wouldn't have to go much more lower than this, so it can actually just stick out. You can have it just sticking out. You don't weld this up; just have it come out like a bridge. Stick it out, so it'd be like having, you know, this sticking here. About that far would do it. And just have it stick out a little bit. A little different looking. Oh well. You need to put a little weld up in here. Get some more support on that. Wouldn't hurt. You don't have to, but. 
Wouldn't hurt to do a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty thick. You can probably get away with it. It's pretty thick in there. You want at least a quarter inch material minimum, but three eighths would be better, like these are. But quarter inch is minimum. So get what you want. So anyway, that's kind of where I'm at. So I need to determine my stroke length here, and then I can go spend some money on a crank because that crank, like I said, that one does not fit in the case. I know I got some smaller diameter fly wheels that are four and three quarter stroke. I don't know if I can put a four and three quarter stroke on this motor. It'd be nice. But that'd make it about 148 inches. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that'd be good. 146 inches, something like that. It's not gonna get to 150, but it get close. All right, that's where we're at on that one. Let me go move this, spin this around. And let's see what the lifter block looks on the other side. Spacer in there. Okay, so now I'm trying to figure out <coughs> if I don't cut the cylinder away or don't move it, how much clearance do we have to have here to make this work? So. Obviously, I cannot put this block in here with a cylinder on, on here. That's out. So this has to be off. Now we can put this on here. That's why this case isn't ground on, dumbass. I'm on the wrong motor. This is the one I ground the piss out to make room. There you go. I knew I had to do it on one of them. Yeah. This is factory. It's made to have lifter blocks put in it. Okay, so obviously you can't have anything sticking here with a bolt because that's where the lifter block is at. So that's out. There's no way of putting bolts here. Well, you can put one bolt here, I guess. But it'd be hard. See, you can't get the block in and out of here. So I don't think it's going to happen. You can't put bolts there. It's just not going to happen. Not in this present location. Even this one here would be kind of hard to do. So we need to move the rod over side. Basically, I need to do a side by side rod and move all this stuff over. That's kind of the way I'm leaning. But otherwise, I can just bolt this thing down the way it is and run it. So these are where the bolt holes are on this side. Uh, so I gotta do my V angle check and I think these are gonna hit each other. Pretty sure they're going to. Now these are made to be seven sixteenths bolts, I think. So if I drop down to three ace bolts, that gives you some more clearance. So that might be enough to get the buy. The problem is there's not a lot of strength in here because it's pretty thin under here. There's no support out here. This is maple believe so. And there's a bolt there's a bolt going through into here so this is hollow in here and these bolts that bolt there would probably hit that bolt there that's going through there i bet so i don't think we'll be able to put a bolt there i think we're going to have to come out close to what this one is so. and the disadvantage of moving the cylinder over is the push rod angle is going to get even worse which is kind of what i was going to look at right now Okay, the intake wasn't too bad on the front, so it shouldn't be too bad on the back. But it looks like it's pretty bad because this one is not cut at the same angle as this one is. Of course, right now I'm hitting on a cylinder. The cylinder's in the way, so I can't even really get in there to see the angle. Yeah, it's probably... It's going straight up instead of an angle, so that's not going to help me. 
That's going to be bad. So this lifter block is definitely going to have to have the angle changed on it. So you can see how it's going straight up and down, whereas this one here is angling in. So. This one's supposed to be angled. Well, this one's going pretty straight up and down too when you actually push on it. So I'm at the recut ball. No matter what, I got to recut these here. So go like that with them. And back here, definitely the lean. All right, here definitely different angles. If I move the cylinder over, it's going to get even worse. But I think I'd rather have worse push rod angle and have nothing to hold my cylinder down with. So what do we got this direction here? See, it really wants to be offset. See how it comes out ahead up here. It's coming out pretty much straight down. So it wants to be, it wants to be over here. See. So when you move the cylinder over, it's going to be like this cylinder over here. It'll be about the same amount of offset. So we're fine. I'm fine with that. So like I said, it just needs to go over that. Yeah, you can go over five eighths of an inch. The rod's at least three quarters, so yeah, we're going to be moving it. So I think it moving it over that way is the answer to this whole whole deal. Now if I go off this other side, let's see. Looks like that angle's more. I can't feel it really. I know it's not straight up and down, so I can't feel it too much crap in the way. There you go, it's at that angle like that. Okay. Looks like it's aiming for like right over here. So it's not as good as this cylinder. It needs to be like this one where it kicks way over. Because obviously these cylinders are equal. This is Harley's, which we aren't. We're not. So we just have to recut the angle of this lifter block to match what we do on the cylinder and then we'll be fine. The push rod won't care because it's in a ball socket. It strictly covers to get on the seal oil and that's all it's for. So it looks like we're going to have the same fitment issue with this one as we're going to have on the other cylinder. So I'm going to go kind of like that. So here it kind of be in here. These are not very stable systems we're dealing with here. These are kind of just laying in here. And this one over here was over here. There you go, it looks like that. Well, that's kind of how it would look. Obviously, a four cam motor. Hey, we lost two push rods. Obviously, a four cam like this, everything lines up. So. But we don't. Nothing else works on a four cam motor. Everything's off. There's so many problems with that setup like that. It's ridiculous. So. This one by far is the easiest to build. It's not the best way, but it's the easiest way. It gives you a frame to mount in. You can fit it right into any big twin bike, basically. That's what I'm hoping for. Or at least a custom frame big bike would be fine. Not a big chopper frame, just an aftermarket stock style frame would be fine. Whereas this one here, there's you got nothing. There's no motor mounts. The tranny will be gone. You know, I want to bolt it into a Harley frame like this when I'm done, so all this stuff would be gone. This is not going to be there. 
the, you know, the generator's in the way, so it's gone. Buell makes their motor, which is triangle shaped like this, so it doesn't have this problem. But uh, they have other issues. The motor, this main bearing needs to drop down to make room for a, a bigger crank that you can buy. I'm going to use a left case no matter what, not a Sportster case. So I'm going to use a big twin left case. So that'll be what we're going to do on that. So anyway, more issues. All right, that's it for this first minute.